I lose my way and wander out of my life. Everything in my organized heavens breaks and scatters. The ground heaves, uprooting the great tree. I gaze up at the massive tangle of roots. Intoxicated by the dank smell of the black earth, I close my eyes and breathe. Then my heart is pulled down like a great stone dropping in the sea. I lose my footing and plunge headlong into the blackness. Desperately clawing for anything to break my fall, I scream in terror, but no sound comes out. I have dropped into the mouth of the Great Mother, and I am certain she will eat me alive. Come to me, she says. Panic-stricken, I grope in the darkness. I'm in a place of total desolation and emptiness. I cannot feel what is under my feet, and I don't know where to go. This is time out of time. Gradually, in the half-light, I see around me the walls of a cave. I'm trapped, terrified. I can do nothing, for my hands are broken, and my feet fail beneath me. No one will find me here. Through the darkness, the Great Mother's hand reaches out like a claw, squeezing my heart, ripping at my sinews. I'm being crushed and devoured. I collapse and try to escape on the slow, long waves of my breath. Stay. Unable to move, I wait and watch. Scenes of past and future events haunt and torture me. I see everything I have not done and everything I must do. All my limitations are vividly displayed before me. I cannot bear the pain. Desperately alone, I rage at the cold stone chamber I have nothing, and in this place, nothing that I have done is valued. The cave absorbs my fierce wailing, and when I'm spent, the silence vibrates around me. The darkness still weighs thick and heavy, confirming my aloneness. Dazed, I reach out and stroke my toes, I lose track of which is which and whether there are even ten. A flicker of warmth stirs within me. This, my body, is one thing that is mine. The rest is illusion. Yet even as I claim this, I know that it too will be taken away. I let it comfort me. You will take nothing from this place but your skin and bones. My sleep is shattered with endless scenes of deceit and torture. Frightful atrocities overwhelm me. Appalled and grief-stricken, I want to run away. I have become everything I hated and feared. My illusions of perfection are wrenched from me. I am both the monster, cruel and terrible, and the victim. How can this be? Filled with shame, I weep. My tears make a pool upon the cool stone floor. Stay in this holy place. Find the well, drink and be nourished.
Once again, my dreams are wild and chaotic. What do they mean? What pattern do they reveal? Slowly, I see them as the shattered pieces of my life laid before me. This is what I am, for better or worse. Perhaps there is no pattern, just the pieces. I feel helpless and confused. None of my old skills serve me here. I wait and listen. The cave begins to feel like a womb. I feel the Great Mother's dark presence hovering behind me, but I'm not afraid. Everything is already in ruins. There's nowhere to go. In the darkness, I feel her hands gently caress my swollen eyes. Then she slowly reaches under my ribs to embrace me. With grateful tears, I fall back into her embrace. With her enormous body surrounding me, I open the floodgates of my broken heart. Instantly, I know she will protect me. I see the pieces on the floor and they look different now. I gather my broken dreams and spin them into something new. She guides my trembling hands. Nothing disturbs this task. Only love organizes in these realms. Leave everything else upon the floor. What you have loved must now serve love. In the solitude, I rock gently back and forth, pick up a tiny fragment and hold it carefully in my palm. When it feels warm and alive, I twist it with another piece. I don't know what I am making, but the simple act of twisting the threads brings me peace. As the strands grow, my hands strengthen and move faster. There's more light in the cave and I scan the floor for anything I might have missed. A shiver of awareness runs through me. This is not a repair. I'm building a completely new life. As I spin, I sense that I could leave this place, but I am not yet ready. Once fearful and broken, my heart is very fragile. Still, hope swells within me as I see the strands reveal their shape. This is a shawl. I feel a quickening and start to hum. I listen. As I weave in the great ringing of silence, I hear the Great Mother ask me to abandon my willful arrogance and false passions. If I grant her this request, I know I shall never be the same. The shawl that I am making is not to hide old shame and nakedness, for it's woven of these very things. Within her great body, I have let myself be consumed. I know the shawl is woven from my remains. In the pool, I see a lotus floating on the water. I remember that I am hungry. I cup the flower in my hands and hold it dripping to my chest. The lotus reaches into my chest spreads beneath my breasts and licks me with its gentle fire. 
She has kissed me through the flower. Her lips and tongue are deep inside me. I feel her breath throughout my naked body. Your body is part of me. You wear one of my many faces. Now, go and sing your song. Walking in the sunlight, I know that part of me will never fully return to this world. Everything in nature reminds me of her. The cool stones, the flowers, the great silent trees all carry echoes of my encounter within her great dark womb. Though I carry a great darkness within me, I am no longer sad or fearful. Remembering my time with her comforts me. The spinning continues deep within me. I feel her lips still upon my heart. When I breathe, it is her song I want to sing. My busy life no longer seduces me. With a great heaviness in my body, I walk slower. The lines upon my face are the cobwebs of my past, woven with tears and love. I wear them now with pride. This is my shawl, my life. I will not hide anymore. Now that you know me, you will find me everywhere.